FFL 360 team call this week. We are honored to have Evelyn Jones on the call. Um, I'll let her introduce herself in a second, um, but she's super humble. And so she might not tell the whole story, but she's an absolute stud. Um, she's been killing it the first few months. <laughs> um, um, but I'll let her kind of take the reins. We'll ask her some questions. And if you guys, I, I would definitely take down some notes. Uh, she's been here about two months and is, you know, went from brand new to, to about, you know, $68,000, I believe, in her first two months of being here, which is awesome. Um, and a lot of that comes down to, you know, her work ethic, you know, her schedule. So we'll, we'll kind of dive in that today. Um, but Evelyn, if you could just like hop on, introduce yourself. What were you doing before FFL? What got you to FFL? And let's just, we'll start there. Um, so, uh, I, my whole background is in music, so I did an undergrad, a master's, and a doctorate, all in music performance, um, and then afterwards, I had a really hard time finding a job uh, for that, and so um, I was kind of like freelancing, and then I also started managing an auto shop, and so uh, I did that for a little bit, um, and then when COVID hit, I got laid off. And so then I took a construction job where I was working as like a foreman to, you know, build playgrounds. <laughs> so lots and, of sales skills. Um, yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> 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 uh, so, yeah, I mean, the, the, with Firestone, I mean, it was, it was pretty wild. Like there was, uh, the shop we were at was one of the like higher volume shops uh, in Arizona, which is where I was. At, at that time and uh, we were seeing like 50 cars a day and um, average sales person was doing about 20,000 and I was doing about 70 to 100. Uh, so that was, um, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. It was just really fun, like helping all those people, you know. Um, and then uh, after the construction job, I got laid off with them. Um, and then Elvin Melcher put up a, a uh, Craigslist ad, and I um, responded to that. Uh, I got into the course, and then I got super skeptical. I thought it was like a scam, and so uh, I kind of like, you know, ghosted him a little bit, <laughs> and then yeah. he told me uh, the position was filled, and so he basically <laughs> fired me. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, <laughs> three months later, uh, Nathan, his brother called me. He's like, are you sure you don't want to do this? And I was like, I thought the position was filled. <laughs> <laughs> um, Here we are. Then, <laughs> uh, after that, I got contracted and everything else is history. So what, what made you skeptical about, you know, this being a scam? I, the same thought process went through my head. I'm like, right. Either got to be too good to be true, and it's a massive scam that everyone's in on, or it is that good. So I, I at least got to give it a shot. But what was going through your head that you know was like, hey, this might be a scam? Um, yeah, definitely the money. Uh, it just it, there just seemed like way too much money that everyone was making. You know, Evan was like, yeah, I just made like four hundred this year. I'm like. Okay, well, that's obviously not true. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, he was like offering me to show, like, show me his bank statements, and I was like, I'm sure you're just gonna like, you know, uh, make them up or you know, use Photoshop or something like that. So I didn't even entertain that idea. So now that you've been here for two months, is, <clears throat> is the money real? Sorry, you cut out one more time. Oh, now that you've been here for two months, is you still feel like it's a scam, or do you feel like? Oh. No, uh, I'm at the point now where um, it's, I, I want to be able to just to share this with as many people as I can to be able to change their lives because I mean, there's just so many people out there that are working super hard and they're just being taken advantage of and not getting paid what they're worth. Yeah, I, um, I, I know a lot of folks on here know I, I was coming from corporate America and when I got that corporate job, I'm like, oh yeah, sweet. You know, I'm making 70, 80, uh, 90 grand a year. Like, I made it. And then I'm like, I was listening to a bunch of people that they didn't even have college degrees and what, whatever it is. I'm like, there's no effing way that someone's making 300K, 400K. If I can just do a portion of that, I'm going to be happy. And now that you, you're here, I mean, how much did you deposit into your bank account the first two months? Uh, 
I mean, at least, I, I haven't counted it, but um, I want to say at, at least 60. So 60 K deposited. Like minimum. Subtract, yeah. subtract your lead cost real quick. How much did you think you spent on leads? Um, I think I'm pretty close to um, about like 15 for the two months. So 60 minus 45. So you're up $45,000 ballpark. Right. Two months. And you know, this is still like your learning curve. <laughs> what other business can you get paid 45 G's to, to, to learn what we're doing over here? Yeah. Um, right. I know a college for a whole year just it costs 45 grand <laughs> to go to college right. for a year. And here you're just kind of smashing through that. Um, so I would love to kind of understand like how you got off to such a fast start, just like, like off the bat, like how many leads were you buying? Like, what did your schedule, like, like, what do you spend each week on leads? Um, minimum of two, maximum of three. Two to $3,000 a week, non-negotiable yep. on leads. Okay. Did you have that kind of money off the bat or did you just build your way into that? No, I think I started with like $200. <laughs> God. And then how did you work your way up to 3,000? Um, so uh, Sam helped me out a lot at, at the beginning. Um, and after I learned, like when she told me when I first started that, you know, what she paid, like to help me out, like that was really big motivation for me to do as best as I could. So like, you know, I don't, I don't waste her money, you know? So like, I, I took that as like a, like a responsibility, like she's investing in me. So I need to make sure that, you know, uh, I respect that with hard work. Yeah, that's awesome. It's just how much easier, or not easier, but how much simpler, once you started getting to like the two to $3,000 a week in leads, just like, I know it sounds like a lot when you're first starting, but now that you're there at two to 3,000, I mean, how much simpler does that make your life? Uh, yeah, it's pretty massive. Um, I'm at the point now where I probably have, I'm probably getting too many leads because I'm able to book more quickly. Um, so I, I mean, right now my, my problem is too many leads, which is a pretty You're good problem. problem. <laughs> yep. um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm at the point now where I think, at least for today, I think I was, I was, my goal was 20 appointments, but I think I might do more than 20 because I have so many leads, so. Hey, that's not a <laughs> problem to have. Guys, so two to $3,000 a week in leads, and what kind of leads are you buying? Um, so instant internet, um, the the new Facebook leads that came out. Um, Is that those of, final expense ones that came out? The, yeah, yeah, yep. the, I think the ones are like 25 a pop or something. Okay. Um, and then uh, there's been a couple game time uh, orders I've made. Um, and then there's been stacks of Sam's old leads of final expense and mortgage that I've, I've ripped through at the beginning too. Huh. To started. So mostly instant internet leads and the Facebook final expense leads. You're trying to just gobble up as many of those as you can get. 100%. Okay, so if you ordered a hundred of these instant leads, how many are you typically selling? Uh, I mean, it, there's, I've had some really great days and I had some really bad days. So like, uh, you know, uh, I, I could, I think I've, my best has been like 20 to 30 and, but I've also only had like eight some days. So okay. uh, it so really, yeah, just really maybe averages on. like 15 ish per, per hundred leads. Yeah, ish, yeah. Somewhere around there. So you spend $1,000, you set 15 appointments. Five of them just aren't going to be home. So that leaves you with 10, you close half, you're at five, you know, that's $5,000. You do that twice a week, you're at 40K a month. Off yeah. That's where a lot of agents get, get hung up is that they're expecting everyone to book an appointment with them. But if you can just get, you know, 10 to 15 appointments out of those, that's, that's money. Like, and you're helping out a lot you know if you just help five out of those 100 people you're printing money over here which is awesome okay and then you're also you know you're booking a bunch of appointments what time do you start dialing um minimum 8 p.m or 8 p.m 8 a.m <laughs> 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 
you know, you I just started the day before. Australia. You know? <laughs> okay, so eight, non-negotiable, 8 a.m., you're dialing yeah. phones. Yeah, there's, there's some dial days where I'll start 7.30 if I have over 150. Okay, and then so between like 8 and noon, like a four-hour stretch, how many phone calls are you getting in in that four hours? Um, I usually can average about between 60 to 80 dials an hour. Um, a big thing is, um, you know, my mindset and how easily I'm distracted that day. <laughs> I'll yep. be honest, you know, uh, but yeah, roughly around that. So 60, 80 phone calls an hour. So, and I think that that's key. And I know you're under Sam, correct? Yep. Or Sam. Yep. And she got on our call a few weeks ago and she goes, yeah, I make 75 phone calls an hour. Um, so what you guys are pretty much doing is you're just condensing times. I don't know about you, but I freaking hate dialing. I don't know anyone that's like, yes, I get to dial today. <laughs> I want to be done dialing. And that's what Sam said. I want to be done as soon as possible. So she goes, if I can make 75 phone calls an hour you know, between eight and noon, I'm at 300 phone calls. I'm not working any harder or any longer. I'm just trying to condense how fast can I get my calls done? You know, am I you know, taking nine hours to make 300 phone calls or is it taking me four hours to make 300 phone calls? And then you're getting a lot better in that period of time. And so if you do have to work, you know, a, a true eight hour day on the phones, which is, you know, no different than waking up and going to a, a job eight hours a day, but you're making 600 phone calls for that day. And that's without getting any better at anything else. If you can just get better at working, it, 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 <laughs> that's it. Um, the last week, I just saw your numbers. How many appointments did you run last week and how many did you close? Um, last week was pretty low. Um, I mean, as far as like uh, applications, but uh, I did uh, 36 appointments. Uh, I did 10 applications. Um, one of those was I, I double stacked two policies. So it was really nine people that closed. Um, and then I think it was 11 or 12,000. So like, you don't have to be a wizard in the home to make $10,000 a week. Right. All you got to do, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you just got to put the work in on the phones. And like, you know, they just, a lot of it's key what you said on how many phone calls you're making per hour. You go run 30, 40 appointments, you can close less than a third of them and you're still making 10 grand a week without having to be a wizard in the home, um, which that is just freaking awesome. So, I mean, Evelyn, you've had a lot of massive, massive success out of the gate. Um, you know, some of it seems like surreal, like, you know, okay, sweet. Am I really, am I really doing that? And like, yeah, yeah that's real. Um, what do you think are a few like key things that you're doing every day, um, that allows you to, to do that and, and don't be humble here. Please share whatever you got. Um, I, you know, I, I think a big thing is, you know, surrounding yourself around people that you want to have similar, um, results or success with. Um, so, you know, I've been at the office with Sam every dial day, um, been on the phone with Evan a lot, been on the phone with Tyler Segal a lot, um, you know, and just doing everything I can to be a sponge and just like learn, you know. Um, the person that asks the most questions is always gonna win. <laughs> so yeah. I've just been, um, you know, playing the idiot and just learning as much as I can. Uh, because I, I, I came in here with knowing nothing about life insurance. Uh, so it was, it was a huge learning curve for me. Got it. So how many, I think that's actually what you just said. That's actually, enough. I've had this conversation with a few agents, um, that, you know, that aren't having as much success out of the gate as they'd like. Uh, we find out they're not reaching out to people too much. How many times a day and how many different, how many different people do you think you reach out to on a daily basis? That reach out to me? Or, that you, how many people do you reach out to? Oh, when you're first oh doing gosh. Um, a lot. <laughs> like at minimum of like, I don't know, like five, like a Got day. It. So reaching out to five different people and I'm assuming you're reaching out to them at least once or twice. Oh yeah. A day. Oh yeah. You know, you're picking up the phone 10 times asking for help on how you can get better. 
And it's just a lot of those small things that you're doing is what's allowing you to get so much better. So instead of waiting till the end of the day, instead of waiting to the end of a week to figure out what we could have done better, you, the next home, I mean, this business is real simple. You're running into a lot of the same objections every single time. So the next time you walk into a client's home, you're walking in with knowledge that you didn't have before that. Um, so we got reaching up, asking questions, anything else you think that, you know, you're doing that's really allowing you to have this type of success that agents can, you know, pretty quickly implement. Yeah, I, I think to piggyback really quick on the last one too, um, Sam kind of guided me with, um, we kind of had a deal where anytime I had a no sale, um, I call her and we talk about it and we analyze it to like the T and like what happened, like, was it something that I did that I could have done better? Or was it something that, um, that was just totally out of my control? Um, and then additionally, um, you know, I, the biggest thing I would say would be mindset and just uh, not being afraid to um, just either one to work. Um, you know, I the last dial day, I I think I was dialing till like 10 p.m. and I only made like 15 appointments. Like it was a rough dial day, um, and so just being sure that um, you know, no matter what happens, you're going to challenge yourself to be in the best mindset possible so then you can make the appointment or um, close the sale. Uh, so do you, all the stuff that you're doing, do you think anyone can do it? Yeah, 100%. You don't have to be some insurance whiz, you know, you don't have to be the smartest person. Anyone can do is what you're saying. Oh, absolutely. I, uh, I had no idea what an annuity was two months ago and I'm going to have my first one next week. So like, yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> so it's just pretty simple. Um, it sounds like a, a few pillars that a lot of us can start implementing. You know, even if you're an experienced agent just trying to get to the next level, um, you know, reach, pick five people that you see up on the leaderboards that you want to, to be, that you want to emulate how much they're doing um, and reach out to them at least once a day. And don't be afraid to work, right? So, you know, if a day's good or a day's bad, just you got to do what we got to do to, you know, to get it done where, you know, this isn't a job, right? This is an opportunity that we got to capitalize on. So we're in control of it. So I appreciate that, Evelyn. So, Hey, if someone's like, Hey, I would love to work with Evelyn. You know, I, I was in construction before I worked at a, you know, car shop. I, Hey, I'm also a dropout, like musician, like <laughs> hey, she's doing what? And if they want to work with you, how do they get a hold of you um, to, to reach out? Um, so my phone number is 612-360-0417. Uh, my Instagram is EVIB123. And I'm on Facebook, Evelyn Jones. Sweet. I appreciate it, Evelyn. Well, hey, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. So thanks again for hopping on. We'll open up for a quick Q&A after this. Um, but Evelyn, it's been awesome watching you guys felt revival and compassion just you guys are just pumping out top agents after top agents and a lot of what we're hearing from the you know the, the groups that are coming on is keeping it simple like you guys are you know buy two three thousand dollars a week in leads um always reach out to people you know make 75 ish phone calls an hour and the rest falls into place so thanks again for hopping on evelyn and i'm excited to see you guys hit or excited to see you hit hall of fame this year so i appreciate I can't it wait.